Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna add some fall touches to our flower shed. We're starting here in the greenhouse because I thought it was supposed to rain today and it's actually, it's like overcast and chilly and I think we might get rain. Anyway, I thought it might be nicer to start here. We'll plant the pots up here. We'll move them out to the flower shed. And yesterday I went out and cut some corn stalks and we've got pumpkins in the barn so we can just add a little bit of fall out there because I haven't done a thing. Now these are a type of aqua pot. This is the style Chicago. I've got two of them here, which I thought would look really pretty flanking the double doors out there. And we did plant up some aqua pots, which are self-watering. That's a self-watering insert right there. We planted them up earlier this season and not to throw Aaron under the bus, but he stopped watering them <laughs> when it got really hot. So even if you have a self-watering container, you still do have to add water. <laughs> to that reservoir every once in a while. But the beauty of this at this point of the year is that we already have two pots out there that have boxwoods that we've been watering on like, like twice a week, maybe even once a week at this point basis, which is about how often we would need to check the reservoir. So it's kind of already on our schedule and I think we will succeed with this group of pots and this group of plants. Now, these plants are awesome, you guys. So for our centerpiece, I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them. I always say that and then I always tend to do it, but. We've got three, four different perennials we're putting in these pots. The first one is this gorgeous Carex called Ice Dance. This is a zone five through nine, so we can leave it in this container. It will come back next spring most likely as long as we keep some moisture in there um, or we can pop it out and put it in the landscape. But this is such a fresh looking grass. Hard to come by this time of year, I think. Uh, we've also got a couple of hookahs here called Peachberry Ice. And these are a zone four through nine, I think. Yeah, zone four through nine, big, beautiful autumnal shade here. Uh, and this is one of the hookahs that I have better luck with having them return. Not all hookahs do well here, but this one has been a good performer for us. The other perennial we have is Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. I just saw these and thought, oh, they look so good in bloom and look at how beautiful those look together. And we can use these out in the landscape later. We've got a couple of ivy. This one is yellow ripple and it's a zone five through nine. And look at how robust it looks right now. I mean, this is already gonna be like trailing on the ground. We're gonna need to do some trimming. And what was the other thing? I've got a couple of ornamental kale down there. I may or may not use those. I brought those over just in case. And we've got some ornamental peppers, which is an annual. So the kale and the pepper are the only two plants in these arrangements that will not come back for us, but I think that's pretty good. Now, a few details on this pot. These are 19 inches tall and the diameter is 20, just over 20 inches. And the pot itself, they're lightweight, they weigh 11 pounds. And then the insert, which is something you can get separate to put in your own containers that you already have, these hold just under three gallons of water, which in the heat of the summer might buy you two or three days this time of year it might buy us two weeks we'll see how it goes so let's put this together Whoop. see the inside there's your water reservoir super ugh, tightly wrapped here hang on there we go and this right here is our water where we put our water in so you just slide that up through the little hole here and it tell it, oops, but you don't want to do it too, too much, otherwise you pull it right out. Hang on, technical difficulties here. Get that screwed on and see how that telescopes up. It rests down like that and it goes down in your pot like so, right like that. That's all you have to do. So, you know, you'll see this maybe. Probably not today, our plants are so fluffy. Uh, but when we planted our other ones with annuals and the, when the annuals were still really small, you could see it right in the beginning and then it kind of gets covered over a little bit with the flowers. So having a bright color right here is handy because you can locate it really easily. So I'm just gonna fill these with potting soil, which I brought over several bags and we're gonna get to planting here. Using the organic potting mix, packing it down in. We'll see how much this takes. I'm not sure what capacity these are. Okay. 
because we're dealing with some larger root balls, I'll probably just start with that. So that was just over one, one cubic foot bag of soil. And we are positioning these pots toward a wall. So I'm going to put the, the uh, centerpiece toward the back of the pot and I'm going to position this to where it's off to the side a bit. Oh my. Oh, that came out a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Not super root bound. Just do a little teasing here. Just a little bit. Look at that, it's already wanting to spread. We could pop that off right there and start us a new plant. Okay. Make sure that the root ball has soil all the way around it. Like that. See, and that way we'll always know that the water access is right next to the grass. That makes it easy. Probably want to do our hookara next. I haven't even thought about how these are going to come together. We'll see. I might have to play with it a little bit. Watch your eyes. Poke you in the eye. Okay. Hollow out a little spot here. In go the hookara. My goodness, that's a big plant. I'm just grabbing soil from the front and dragging it back around the root ball of the grass just to make sure it's all tucked in, nice and cozy back here. Don't want any air pockets. Let's do our Nepeta next. Now this is a zone three through eight, 12 to 14 inches tall, 18 to 20 inch wide. I have these all over in the landscape, I love them. Look how pretty that is. I think I need more soil, just a, just a little bit. Sneak some down in there. I'd say that was about a bag and a half. I can smell that nut, but it smells good. Now we have to decide how we want it to look up front. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if I'm gonna use the ivy. I might just keep it clean. No trailers. Let's do this one. And remember, you can tip these root balls a little bit if you want the face of the cabbage to shine a little bit. So we'll just do kind of a diagonal hole here. Oh, that looks so pretty. And then we're gonna tuck our pepper right back here. Yeah. I'm just twirling it around to where I like the way it looks. So if we added this in, do you think too much? Yeah, Aaron thinks too much. So we'll skip the ivy for now. We'll find another use for that, but that is gorgeous. So one, two, three, four, five, five plants all together. Nice big plants, but keeping in mind, you can use these three in your landscape later. So you can kind of get a twofer, which is nice. So I'm not gonna water these in or fill the reservoirs until we get them moved out there. So I need to plant one more, then we'll move them out. Then I'll add all my other goodies. They both turned out so pretty. And I do think that you're right, Erin, that if I added this, like, take a look. If I added this, then you wouldn't really be able to see the pot and it would look maybe a little bit not balanced unless I had more than just one uh, around the perimeter of the pot. Now, since we're flanking a doorway, I did do them opposite. I did have to, I had to take this one apart a little bit to retool because I just started copying what I had done here. But then you would end up with the hookah both on one side uh, and that would look kind of odd. So you wanna do, you know, just mirror image, right? Is that right? Mirror image each other so that the peppers are facing, the hookahs on, are on the outsides and the doors will be right where I'm standing right here. So Aaron and I are gonna load these up in the back of the gator. We're gonna take them out to the flower shed, get our corn stalks up and get our pumpkins up. I'm really excited because I have done virtually nothing out there this year. It's pretty bare up there.
right guys, we got it all done and it turned out so dang cute. Look at this. I, it doesn't take much to just spruce up the front here. I mean, the corn stalks were already growing out in the garden. So fun to go out and get those. Now, in order to have these stay put, I just used a wood stake, pounded into the ground, and then tied the bundle that I had already pre-tied together, just tied that to the stake. So nothing has to be attached to the building, which is really quite nice. And I do think that they will stay put a lot better that way. And then we came in with the containers. And then the pumpkins. Oh, and I did put some white pansies in around the boxwoods. I thought that that would add a little bit of charm and a little bit of color. And that will go into winter as well, nicely. And there's really no rhyme or reason to the pumpkins. We just brought out a load and I just started unloading them. I was going to do, you know, the whole hay bale or straw bale thing in between. And then just decided, no, I didn't really want that mess. I just wanted it to be simple, a little bit of color. The containers look so good though. I mean, look at the color that just those bring. I love them. So when I came into water, when you initially water in a self-watering container, you do want to water them in from overhead. So I put my hose wand down in here and got everything settled. And then I found our little spout. See, it's kind of nice that it's blue in there <laughs> so you can see it. And I stuck my hose down in there and I waited until you can hear it. You can hear when it's about ready to be filled up. I also noticed it running out the bottom. So it does have, you know, an overflow and it will go down through the bottom drain hole if it gets too full. So that was my indicator right there. And then there's my spout and this one. They're both kind of facing the back of the shed. So it's easy to get in there and know exactly where to find them. So I had planted a few little perennials in here this spring. There's some columbine and there's actually a clematis right here at the corner and that is as far as I got <laughs> clearly and we put these stones in here last fall uh, so that we would have a way to get from where the grass was into the shed without there just being a muddy mess so there's really there's absolutely no art to that we just plunk the stones down I kind of love it it's a little bit haphazard like it's not total uniform it's something we'll probably fix eventually but I love how the grass goes right up to the door as well and I think I'll try to keep that I think that's really really pretty and then we'll just carve out some very uh relaxed flower bed something that can just kind of like almost merge with the grass here and then in order to not mess up the water to the orchard I'm thinking you know we could train that clematis up we could also train a climbing rose wouldn't that be beautiful Maybe we pop the clematis over, put a climbing rose here, and kind of train it up and over the windows. I'm a little torn about that too because I love this shed and I think it's so cute. I don't really want to mask it, but that would maybe just add to the charm. I just love this space out here though, any time of the year. I'm so grateful for this shed. I mean, we were able to keep so many things out here that we use right here in the cut flower garden. So it's not a back and forth, back and forth. And even in the heat of the summer, I mean, like when we were making wheat wreaths in here this summer uh, and it was a hundred plus degrees outside, you open all the windows and you have fans going and it's completely pleasant in there and it feels it feels good so we do have the little heater that we can run if we want to do some projects in the winter but it's just been such a versatile area and it's an area that i can kind of trash like the floors are just concrete i mean i've showed you in here before and i don't trash it i mean clearly <laughs> it's clean in here but i can just do my projects drop everything on the floor and not worry about crunching it all over i don't care if the floor gets marked up and stained and things i think that adds to the the patina. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. Super happy to have this little area done. I think it turned out really sweet and it was very easy. I like sweet and easy. <laughs> That's nice sometimes. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.